Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to delve into AI image generation. Specifically, we're going to start with demos of Stable Diffusion Online, Bing Image Creator, and Leonardo AI. These are some of the best free applications for generating images online. And once we've got a feel of what they can do, I'm going to discuss the broader implications of this new family of AI tools. Right, here we are on the website for Stable Diffusion Online. And like all of the applications we're going to look at, Stable Diffusion is a deep learning generative AI model that converts text prompts to images. And what this means is that Stable Diffusion has been trained on a vast data set of captioned images, and it draws on this training data to generate an image from scratch when provided with a text description. To use the free version of Stable Diffusion, we don't even need to create an account. In fact, it's the only application we're going to look at we don't need to create an account for. Rather, all we have to do is to scroll down to uh, Get Started Now and uh, click on Get Started Now, where we need to enter a prompt. And when communicating with an AI, prompt engineering is a whole art form in itself. But in this video, I'm going to test all applications with some pre-written prompts that I've got over here in the notepad. There we are, that's the first one. So let's uh, paste that one in here like uh, that. And with various styles we can choose, in fact, there's loads and loads and loads of styles. We just go down a little bit here. Masses and masses and masses of stars, but we'll stick with a cinematic default. And there are also some advanced options. We can put in, if we wish, negative prompts, things we don't want to appear in the image. And we can also control the seed. The seed is the random number used to initialize image generation. And we can also change the guidance scale, which determines how closely the image generation will follow the text prompt. But uh, for now, we'll get rid of the advanced options. Let's go back to our prompt as we've entered there, and we'll click on Generate. And uh, there it goes. We've got a, a counter down here, but we'll use the magic of filmmaking to speed on through. And here we are. This should be our tall fairy tale castle made from cheese. Possibly, I don't know, it looks a reasonable attempt, I guess. Let's just download the image so I can use it later. There we go. And uh, we'll now just try out some of my other prompts. So I'll just uh, put those in. This is going to be our pink spider crawling over microprocessor. And, uh, oh, that's not bad. I quite like that. That's quite a successful image for a pink spider crawling over a microprocessor. I will save that as well. And uh, we'll now move on to my next prompt challenge. Very exciting. What will it do? Let's put this one in here like that and uh, generate. And, uh, oh, well, it's a rabbit. It's not blue spotted, but it's wearing uh, blue and green clothing. It is eating carrots with a knife and fork, though. Again, that's not too bad. Again, we'll save the image. And finally, we'll move on to something that should be very exciting. Cyborg Panda. That should actually be a cyborg, shouldn't it? I've typed it wrong in here. There we are. Let's try again. Cyborg Panda balloons in background. So uh, let's try that. Let's put that in here. There we are, and uh, generate. And, uh, oh look, a cyborg panda with balloons in background. Again, that's not bad. I'm quite impressed with Stable Diffusion Online. We haven't had to create an account, and we have been able to generate some quite impressive images. Greetings, here I am back again, and we're now running the Bing Image Creator from Designer. Strange name for a product, but it's from Microsoft. They all have strange names. And I didn't think this was going to work. When I first went in, it told me it was too busy to create images. But I tried again, and as you can see, it has worked. I put in the tall fairy tale castle made from cheese into the prompt, and got these images back, which uh, look rather good, don't they? I particularly like this one. That's the one I think I'm going to say. That looks uh, rather good. There we go. But uh, let's now go back and try some of the other things we were trying to generate. There's the pink spider crawling over microprocessor. Let's give that one a go. And uh, you might notice here there's a little uh, counter. This is because you get what are called boosts. 
and if you run out of boosts it takes longer to uh, generate images but I've got enough left for now and as we can see it's now done our spiders and these look uh, rather good I particularly like that one actually looks very good that's a uh, that's very cool isn't it let's uh, download that I can see why this package has got such a good uh, reputation so uh, let's now try my uh, third test there we go, blue and green spotted rabbit eating carrots with knife and fork. We didn't get a blue and green spotted rabbit in the uh, last test from Stable Diffusion, so let's see how uh, Microsoft does. Let's just also give ourselves a bit more space. Let's do that F11 to give ourselves more space on the screen. Oh, it's quite stylistic, isn't it? Very, very different, but uh, that's rather a nice image, although may maybe that one. Yes, I think we'll go with that. That's the image I think I will save as a representative here from Bing. And finally, let's see what Bing can do in generating a cyborg panda with balloons in the background. That's a little test, isn't it? Let's give that a go. Very exciting, this one. What's going to happen? Oh, those are impressive. I like all of those. That looks impressive. That definitely gets downloaded. But uh, I might download several of these. That's also rather impressive. We need more cyborg pandas in the world, don't we? Definitely, let's download that too. And let's go into another one. These are all worthy of being saved, I think. And we might as well look at this one too. This is slightly creepy, isn't it? I guess the cyborg panda is slightly creepy, but uh, we'll save that one as well. We'll have a full set of these cyborg pandas. Right, we've now experimented with Stable Diffusion from Stability AI, as well as Bing Image Creator, which gave us free access to the DALI 3 text-to-image generator from OpenAI, and which I accessed using a Microsoft account. As you may agree, both of these allowed us to easily create some decent images. However, personally, I think the results from Bing Image Creator were more impressive, particularly when it came to the augmented panda bears. But regardless, today there are loads of other websites that offer free AI text-to-image generation, including Playground AI, Night Cafe, Crayon, Lexica, and GenCraft. Meta, the makers of Facebook, also have an offering called Imagine, although this is not currently available to use in all territories. And there are also lots of very impressive paid only services, including the legendary Midjourney, as well as Google's Imogen 2. However, for our last demo, before we ponder the implications of all this, let's take a look at Leonardo AI. Here, if we go to launch the app, you can see we can log in using an Apple, Google, or Microsoft account, or we can create a dedicated account on this platform, and as always for security purposes, this is what I chose to do. It really is a very straightforward process. Once we're logged in, Leonardo AI offers access to a wide range of features for some very impressive functionality here, although for this demo, we'll stick with image generation. Where, as you can see, we need to enter a prompt, as in the other systems, and we can also select a model to uh, generate our image, we can add a negative prompt if we wish, although I've not been experimenting with that. And over on the left of the screen, we also have a number of different controls, lots of controls down here, one of which is for the number of images generated when we click on the Generate button with a particular prompt. And this particularly matters because in the free version, you get allocated 150 credits per day, and you use more credits the more images you generate. So I've been generating based upon the four images. That uses 14 credits per generation. If it was two images, guess what? You'd use seven credits. It's also worth noting that all images you create become public for anybody to use unless you turn off the public images control over here, but you can only do that if you've got a paid plan. And indeed, a lot of the controls down here only work on the paid plan. This said, the functionality available in the free version is very impressive. As you can see, I've been trying it out already. Let's just uh, change my scaling here so we can see the results a bit better. This was the uh, pink spider crawling over microprocessor. This is the uh, cheese castle. Let's just take a look at the cheese castle. The interface here really is fantastic for uh, seeing results. I'll save some of these later. I think that probably, 
And I think that one's the best of those, isn't it? I think that's the, that's the case. And the spiders are rather good. Pink spider crawling over microprocessor. Again, some good results. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. That's probably the best, but uh, I'll have a think about that. But uh, anyway, let's try our third test prompt, which is the blue and green spotted rabbit eating carrots with a knife and fork. Will this work? Shall I? I'll go back to four. I've got just enough credits left to do this in this test, so we'll do this and see what results we get. What's our rabbit going to look like? It's exciting, isn't it? And uh, oh, these are quite good, aren't they? That rabbit has definitely got spots and it's definitely eating carrots with a knife and fork. These are very impressive images, aren't they? Oh, that one's got some lovely little clothes to look at, little necktie and things, but uh, I think probably that's my favorite, I think, of those. That is very impressive. I'll certainly download that image. And uh, finally, we'll try the fourth test, the one that's also rather exciting, cyborg panda balloons in the background. What can it make of that? Here it goes. See what you can do, Leonardo AI. And there we are. That's a rather fierce cyborg panda. I guess some of them are quite fierce, aren't they? It depends as various types of cyborg panda, as you, you may be aware. That one's got a lot of balloons, hasn't it? Balloons coming out of his back there. Um, I, think, I think probably number two. And having generated some more augmented panda bears, I think it's now time to consider the broader implications of this AI technology. As we've just seen, AI image generation can be amazing. However, there are still quite a few issues to be aware of. And the first of these is surrendering creative control to the whim of the machine. Because even people who become very adept, highly expert at prompt engineering, at writing complex descriptions that generate images, they haven't got the same level of creative input, creative control over that image as a human artist creating something from scratch. And of course, people who create images by uh, typing in words or uh, talking to a computer in the future, they won't be actually learning and practicing artistic skills. And so I do worry we're going to enter a world where we get used to instructing a machine to create an image. It creates something and we go, oh, that's good. We're happy with that. But it might not be as good or as novel or as exciting artistically as something a human artist would have created. Secondly, there's the image of copyright. Who owns the copyright in an image created by a generative AI system? That's a tricky question. And indeed, if we look in the FAQ on the Stable Diffusion Online website, in answer to the question, what is the copyright for using Stable Diffusion generated images, Stability AI state that the area of AI generated images and copyright is complex and will vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. The other way around, concerns are being raised about potential mass copyright infringement by those companies who are actually producing the AI image generation systems. Because these systems need to be trained, and they're trained using data, which in practice means millions of images with millions of associated captions. Because what these systems are doing, their neural networks are learning to associate a particular caption, a particular description, a particular prompt with a certain image. So that when we put a, a prompt in, they can generate something based on that prompt from all the millions of images they, they've been trained on. But where do these images come from? And the answer is normally they come directly from the internet. Stable Diffusion, for example, was trained using a set of data called Leon 5B, produced by a non-profit company in Germany called Leon. And uh, a lot of the images in that data set were just scraped from the internet. And therefore, you could argue that Stable Diffusion is making use of the intellectual property of loads and loads of creators without their knowledge or permission. And to that end, Getty Images is suing Stable Diffusion in both the US and the UK, alleging that it scraped 12 million of its images and captions without permission to use as training data. Other image generators, such as the DALI 3 model used in Bing Image Creator, were also trained on scraped internet data. 
And indeed, OpenAI, who make DALI 3, have now put in place a system so that creators can opt out their images from training their future image generation models. And in one sense, this means that they're going to go on stealing intellectual property from websites in a manner that breaks the terms and conditions of many websites until you specifically ask them to stop doing so. However, the counter-argument is that AI models learn from training data the way that human beings learn. And so, for example, as OpenAI argue, after viewing enough pictures of a cat, an image model can draw a completely new cat that was not in its training images, similar to how a person might learn to draw a cat. Presumably, Stability AI will make similar arguments in its defence, and it'll be very interesting to see what happens when the Getty Images lawsuit goes to court, probably in 2024. More broadly, there are concerns about the impact of AI image generation systems on the creative economy. For many years, for example, I've earned some of my living by licensing the rights to images and video I've created to publishers and to broadcasters. And I've also, as a creative professional, purchased images from stock libraries and used them in bits of work for clients. So I'm used in both directions to both selling works of art to people and, and buying things back again. And I worry about what happens when we're in a world where people can just type something into a system that's been trained, potentially on data that was used without the creator's permission, and it creates the images, and you don't get this creative economy functioning. And that's got two potential impacts. One, it means people like myself can't earn a living doing that sort of stuff anymore. But it also means that there isn't a financial incentive for people to get into the business, to actually develop skills artistically, to actually produce images and things in the first place. And so do we end up with a world where the only stuff we have is stuff where it's created by AIs, which have been trained on previous content, because no one's producing masses of new content which can be used to, to train the next generation of system? That's that's rather sad, isn't it? And uh, I suppose it's a broader issue in the whole economy, this, that there is a risk that so many people in so many different areas of activity will find that their last job, consciously or otherwise, is training an AI system. Anyway, what do you think about all this? Do you really like AI image generation systems, or do you worry about the implications, or maybe both? Please let us all know with your lovely human fingers down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.